One morning, Mr. McCormick arrived at Denville Sheds to deliver some exciting news. A film crew is using our railroad for a movie, he told his engines. Are any of us going to be in it? Mr. McCormick laughed. No, none of you will be in it, but two visiting locomotives will be. They're two old wood-burning locomotives from the 1800s. The engines were amazed. They had never met such old engines before. They will arrive tomorrow evening, and I trust you will all make them feel welcome and comfortable. Yes, sir. We will, sir, replied the engines. The next evening, Roger arrived with the two engines on flat cars. Sean was there to help unload them. Once they were unloaded, Sean took them to the sheds, where they settled down and all the engines began introducing themselves. Are you two really from the 1800s? asked Sapphire. Why, yes we are, young missy, said the first engine, whose name was Hunter. We are used to work on a railroad far away hauling gold from the hills, added the other one, whose name was Clyde. You know you guys aren't the only wood-burning engines here, Frederick said. His name is Duke. He's a geared logging engine. Well, I hope we get to meet him soon, Hunter said proudly. I'm pretty sure you'll run into him sooner or later, said Dewan. As the conversation was going on, Lewis puffed in. He was the helper on a coal train that Dominic was bringing up Donna Pass. Hello, said Lewis kindly. You must be the two visiting engines. My name is Lewis, and you are? Um, I'm Hunter, and this is Clyde, Hunter said slowly. What's wrong? Lewis asked. Clyde then turned the attention to Lewis's tender. Why does your tender look so funny? He asked. Oh, said Lewis, I'm an oil burning engine. The two Victorian engines looked at each other in disbelief. Come again now? I burn oil, said Lewis slowly. He was puzzled and so were the others. If you burn oil, said Hunter, then you're not a proper steam locomotive. Hunter's right, agreed Clyde. Proper steam locomotives burn coal and wood. Well, I guess Frederick and Manny and myself are also on proper in your eyes, snapped Malcolm. We're oil burners too. They then looked at their tenders. Well, Malcolm, you're right, agreed Clyde. You're not proper engines. Uh, well, steam ones anyway. Where do you get off talking to our friends that way? Dewan hissed. Hey, respect your elders, snapped Clyde. We'll respect you when you earn it, Lewis fumed. They continued arguing until they all got tired and eventually, one by one, fell unhappily to sleep. The next day, filming started. Dean and Hunter pulled a special train, which included the filming supplies along with some extra freight cars that might be needed for certain scenes. Hunter and Clyde followed, pulling a few passenger cars. The film crew spent days and days filming different scenes. They used the extra freight cars to make different trains. Sometimes Vincent and Dean would have to pull a caboose ahead of them so the filmmakers could include tracking shots. This number corner permitted them to only film near sightings so they could get out of the way of the regular traffic. Hunter and Clyde would be kind to the coal burning engines that would pass but we're very rude whenever one of the oil burning ones pass. Nothing I hate more than oil smoke from an improper engine. If you're gonna burn oil, you might as well be a diesel. Uh, 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 no offense, Hunter said quickly. Every time they made a joke about oil burning engines, they always had to make sure Dean and Vincent weren't offended. One day after filming, Hunter and Clyde arrived at the junction. Hector and Duke were waiting on a siding with a long train of log cars. Look, Clyde, called Hunter, it's that other oil burning engine Sapphire was telling us about. Hello, fellow wood burner, they called, completely ignoring Hector on purpose. Hello, said Duke kindly. It's nice to see other wood burners around here. Nice to meet you, puffed Clyde proudly. I never seen a wood burning logging engine before. Well, where I came from, there was no real way to get coal to where I worked, so they made me a wood burner seem easy and convenient. Quite right, said Hunter. They then turned their attention to Hector. It's a shame you must have this improper oil burning, sorry excuse for a steam engine in your way. Hector, his steam, was about to tell the two wood burners off when Duke said, Hector, calm down, I have this. 
You're guests here. If you don't have anything nice to say to anyone, why even bother saying them? You can't get mad at us for telling the truth, replied Hunter. Oil burning engines aren't real steam engines. And with that statement, they puffed away. Soon Labor Day weekend arrived and the filming crew decided to suspend production until Tuesday. Mr. McCormick was allowed to use Hunter and Clyde on a special excursion train to the top of Donna Pass in return. Ready to show these oil burners how real steam engines work? Hunter puffed proudly to Clyde. I most certainly am, replied Clyde with spirit. And as soon as the conductor was ready, they were The journey started well until they began the climb. Clyde realized that he was doing most of the work. You all right up there, Hunter? He called. <sighs> yes, uh, I'm fine. Uh, just haven't climbed a hill this steep in over 40 years. Hunter was not steaming well, and his driver and fireman were both very anxious. By the time they reached the next water stop, Hunter was completely red in the face and was struggling to breathe and make steam. Maybe I'll feel better after this water stop. As he took on water, his driver looked at him. You don't look well at all. You're steaming horribly and you can barely breathe. We're gonna have to take you off the train, I'm afraid. Clyde, you think you can continue on on your own? Certainly, said Clyde. Shouldn't be too hard. So Hunter was uncoupled and placed in a siding. Clyde put on a brave face and tried to continue. But the passenger cars were heavier than the ones that Clyde was used to back in his old working days. Uh, come on. Come on. Uh. Clyde struggling at the coupling. Uh, uh. Clyde made it only just past the water tower before he too ran completely out of steam. The conductor had to call for assistance. Lewis was in Denville Yard, so Mr. McCormick sent him up the line to rescue the wood burners. He was delighted. That should teach him, that should teach him, he kept saying. When Lewis arrived and saw the sight, he could only smile. Imagine this, an improper engine rescuing two quote-unquote proper engines. The wood burners said nothing. All three had to wait in the siding until Sapphire passed with the down passenger train. After she was clear, Lewis brought the two wood burners down the mountain carefully, moving no more than walking speed. All three were silent until Hunter spoke first. Lewis, we're sorry. What'd you say? Lewis asked. He said that we're sorry, Clyde added. We were wrong to tease you and the others just because you burn oil. Well, when you come to think about it, Hunter said, even though you burn oil, Sean Dewan and Sapphire burn coal and we burn oil, we still all make steam. We still all need water in our boilers and a fire in our fireboxes. And that makes us all steam engines. Beyond what we take on, Clyde added, we're all the same. This made Lewis smile. I'm glad you two have come to realize that, he said. Hunter and Clyde smiled. We are too. Lewis dropped off the passengers and brought Hunter and Clyde over to the shed, where they apologized to everyone, especially the oil burning engines. They accepted their apology, much to Hunter and Clyde's relief. Hunter and Clyde then spent the rest of the night telling all the other engines about what it was like in the 1800s when railroads were still in their infancy. The engines enjoyed the stories and were happy that the two old engines finally seen a new light.